what about the green? Oh. Two or three. There's the minutes. We need to sign. The Lone Star guy called me. They're not going to send you a check until you sign that because their field agent is no longer in the area. Oh. So. They'll probably send you a check. We need to sign that. You had experience with that, don't you, Kurt? No, but I doubt that I could sign it. No, I mean, I, I, I talked to them to send me the check because, it was, to me, that's backwards to release somebody before they pay you. Mm -hmm. And they, they did that for me, but if that's they're not in the area, they said, might not do it. That's what he said. The field agent was no longer in the area, so they couldn't do that. Beth and Kurt did the same thing on their ground. They wouldn't sign it until they. Sent them a check and I sent them a check too. Well, do you want to? No, I think they'll be all right. I so just how don't like their policy. It's like $350. Bucks. Oh, well, they'll send you a check. Any question to sign this agreement with Lone Star Geophysical Surveys? Second. Damages on that. And you're the second. Sign this Lone Star Geological. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. So, would this be the release or signature? Yeah. I've never ever had another release guy do it that way. Yeah. Suppose those are new policy. Oh. Well, might have too much of this policy. They're going to put that in there. Why wouldn't they put it in there straight? What is that? That's the diagram of the floor of the state house. Oh, that they want you to send them a thousand dollars for? I mean, if they're going to put it in the floor, why wouldn't they do it straight and sit on the table for I don't know. Well, you need to decide if you want to send them a thousand dollars for it. What's, what's the other counties doing in the area? Mitch told me to forget that. I don't say I don't want to. Mitch, 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 Mitch said I, I wouldn't do that. He said that's been paid for. Anything they want to do. Well, and then remember, Randall, Randall said something about the county 4 H clubs and stuff, and youth groups or whatever, we could raise the money and that way they had. I mean, if you wanted to do it that way, but I sure hate to just have the county send them money. Same money. But I don't know how you let people know that that would be a project. You'd hate, you'd hate for Stafford County to be the only black county on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I doubt it. <laughs> the black spot. I doubt it. <laughs> yeah. Watch it. Yeah, watch it. <laughs> He's got that rig to flip the okay. out of the sign. <laughs> <laughs> to engage the persons in your county, your employers, is in school and youth and city kids and businesses. But you can't put their name on it in there. No, it might just be the name. By their Friday, and I'm still a monstrosity. The crane with the blinking oh, yeah. lights on it, and the scaffolding. And it's been that way for 10 years, almost. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so, Stahl called me at the state. Portion of their budget was only seventeen dollars last when they talked. So the county appropriations stayed at twenty-five thousand. So the county was well. Um, Steve left this for you. Is that different than what she gave us the other day on the yeah. budget? Seventeen dollars. Seventeen dollars different from what they're getting from the state. So they just left their county portion of the state. 
Oh, that's right. She was going to give that kiss. Yeah. <clears throat> Recess. Come on. We got ten minutes. I carry it around exactly for that reason. Um, all up on that. You just have to go I did. <laughs> uh, first thing I'm just gonna let you guys know about is this. Uh, I think this is all the same. EFM Consulting is who initially wrote up our emergency operations plan. They, they, did, they did quite a few of them throughout the state. Um, County County wanted them to rewrite and to change theirs. And so they tied in with a grant, uh, some leftover funds I guess the state had. But they needed another, they needed like maybe a minimum of three or something. So Barton and Stafford County has um, told them that yeah, we would we would help them get the grant, I mean, get the funding by having the minimum amount of people, um, and in turn they'll actually help rewrite or change our EOP, which I believe is what you guys may have just pre-approved a resolution. We had that one, and yes. never re yes. you know, had a resolution on. So there might be some minor changes with that, but um, it's not going to cost us anything. And, but one thing that Steve did tell them is that to not only have them help us rebuild it, but the state has got this new website that includes all emergency plans in one location, and he wants them to actually upload it to that website too. So that'll kind of kill two birds with one stone. And we looked through there, it doesn't seem to be any signature places for us. Um, it seems to be a contract with Pawnee County. Mm -hmm. And that we're just named in it as supporting, supporting, right? Okay. 
So I don't think we have to do anything. I guess if you guys don't want to, then we won't. So I just. It's $9,900, is that what I saw? Yeah, I didn't look. Um, but probably, that's probably the, the state funds that were left over. I didn't read through the whole thing because I didn't have a page to look at. And I, I make sure I ask two or three times. Now this has got no matching funds or of any kind, and he said, "No, there's nothing that they're asking. This was all funds from the state given to Pawnee County to do this." But I'm, the way I understand it was that the EFM Consulting didn't want to do this for one. You know, they didn't want to take the time to do this for one. They wanted to do multiple. But they'll do them all for that twenty-nine thousand seven hundred, and that's the grant they got. Yeah. Pawnee County got. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, we're just the way I understand we're just participating to help them meet a minimum kind of a, a workload, minimum workload for the FM consultant. And <coughs> it probably helped with the state grant that that um, it wasn't just one county that's getting the benefit of this, you know, it's a multiple counties in there in our area. So that's probably one one big reason to help them even get the funding. And are these the same people that did the mitigation plan? I believe so. They're out to Lawrence or Topeka? Or? Yeah, I, I did not deal with those yeah. individuals. That was right before, See, I, that was, right before I got here, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, that was a grant. I think. That yeah. was a grant, but it was just, you know, it was just Stanford County. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a FEMA thing. Yeah. And I, I, I keep all vouchers and, and bills yeah. paid over the years on my computer and I know I've got one EFM consulting mm -hmm. that we've written out about before. I don't really pay any attention to what it is if it's if it was grant funds yeah, where we paid a funds. where we paid a match to a grant fund is probably what it is. It's like twenty thousand dollars. So I bet you that's I, I think the EFM is, has done most of most of them across the state for the smaller communities anyways. Probably most of the cost is a little time and going to meetings and stuff like that. Yeah, I, if I remember right, back in the mitigation plan, there was, you know, it, there it was a long process with mentioned the multiple meetings. meetings and yeah, yeah. So, and I think that's just important. Yeah, but you know, our our EOP, if you've read through our EOP. It was boilerplated off of something else, but it was, I think, kind of touched up by an individual we mm -hmm. used to employ, and it has some interesting English in it. So it might not be a bad thing to have them. Yeah, for they're free. Out, they're out of line. So it's the same people who dealt with it on the mitigation plan. This, let me make sure it's got it. I don't need to take any. I don't just, yeah. okay. Just the dog signed it. I can say that we we searched and searched and it didn't seem to be any place they needed us to sign, and so. If there is, you'll have to. Yeah. Um, this is the city county um, structural deal. I think that was in your blue sheet. Yeah. So you guys have that one, then, right? The resolution. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it just breaks it down. Try to break it down simply. Is that when we went to the cities and started to explain structure response and requirements and stuff? It, both Stafford and St. John, I know it was kind of a brick, you had a brick wall because it was, it just got too deep as far as. So Steve tried to break it down as simply as possible where we're covering certain items and they cover the truck response and then that's that. So. Everything else stays the same. The cities remain their own. They remain, you know, they if they want to add, you know, if they want to buy gear, they can buy gear. If they want whatever, but the stuff that we already have, we'll just continue to maintain. Would we, would we do this resolution after the cities reach an agreement? You know, and that's what I've been trying to figure out. Is that I think. This is going to be like a three-part deal at this point, I think. I think if you guys approve the way this reads, then we would have to go to each city and make sure they approve how this reads. And then do it. And then do it. I would, that's the only thing I can think. Unless you can, unless there's a way we can get 
like a, a member from each city and you guys at the same place at the same time to well, do it? But they can't make the decision. They can't make the decision uh, unless, yeah. No. So it's You're still going to have to go to each yeah. council. We just wrote this up to get the ball there and then we'll give, I think Steve wrote them kind of, and it may be this one that just changed the wording for the cities. If the cities like this, then they can use this. I can make it easy. And this one would be the count. This one being the counties, so they would just change it to the cities. So this one, I guess I am asking if you like the way it reads and are okay with this, then what I would request is that we can then step further to the cities and take this to them. I don't know. I mean, I think the more resources we share, the better off we'll all be. Yeah. But uh, it's just, yeah, we, there's, there's too much. Uh, this one owns one, this one owns one, this one owns one. Uh, just financially, you can't do that they have a retail, Each city has a retail station for the airbag. They did. Uh, St. John had one, yeah. Stafford had one. Stafford still has one. Um, St. John's was given to or sold to maybe another department that needed one. <clears throat> so it used to be that every station or every city had a refill station. And the bottles were different. The, some of the pressures were different. There was there's a 2200 PSI bottle and there's a 4500 PSI bottle. And so you know some fill stations wouldn't even fill the other bottles. So now we're all 4500 bottles across the county and we're all, you know, very rarely does, you know, you, you need to refill bottles, so it doesn't take much just to bring it out to the station. And we will, what we do is just swap out bottles and then put them in a stack and we'll refill six, eight at a time. So, so we didn't do, do this as a resolution either? Or do you? you don't do anything. You no. Until, until, we need to wait, right? right. Until, until the they cities. get something back written from okay. the city. Yeah. I would suggest. I, I think I just need to know if it's okay the yeah. way it's written I, to go it's forward. It's okay. Okay. How often do you use those breathing Public. packs? Um, any any car fire, um, any structure fire, any fire where there is a questionable um, questionable contaminants in the air, something like that. Um, if we have a like CO carbon monoxide warning, um, or somebody's afraid of it, then we'll go in. So. Would it protect you from galvanized stuff if, if that was melting or whatever? Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, when we have, um, well, there's a few years ago there was a camper, you know, a camper that burned down and there wasn't anything we could do, but you didn't, everybody stood considerably back and two of us, myself and one of the other firefighter, we just went out fully packed just to cool it down because there's so much galvanized metal, so much other. John. Yeah, from Ally. Do you ever rent those out? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I, just, I discovered one of my green bins that went through the tornado that I didn't see any damage. It went, the tornado air went underneath the bottom floor and pushed it Left up. Lifted it in. Oh, tore it out. So I got to go take a cut torch in there, galvanized uh -huh. metal, and cut that out. I'm thinking, how am I going to do that? that yeah. I'm afraid <coughs> part of it was down against the concrete, though. I don't know how you're going to do that. I think a grinder would be Blind the way other fire option. call him. <laughs> <laughs> you have any shirts on that green bin? <laughs> We're going to do it Friday. I thought, you know, an air pack might be stand the best thing. Yeah. 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 We, we will drive around your neck of the woods and put stuff in a little bit, I think. I'll have the cut horse down there. You bring the air pack. It's <laughs> a <laughs> little green dust, is it? No, it's not really green dust. Uh, it was three yeah, feet if, off the ground. If you can get a hold of an air pack, that potentially, you know, depending, they're 45 minute bottles, but that's well, I'll that's, be done in 45 that's, minutes. That's, that's <laughs> at least. Somebody, somebody that, be in there that long. Right, somebody that um, is out of shape, rather used them, can blow through those bottles. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I can be done. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, I can say. Sorry, Terry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> But no, an air pack would be good. 
I'll have to let Nick cut it out. <laughs> there is there is one other thing. There is one other thing that I wanted to just kind of let you guys know about. Some time ago, and I'm, even, I'm pretty sure this was even before election where you guys got here. The, one of the brush trucks, the 99 Dodge that we have, one time duly four wheel drive for 318. Automatic, not even manual, um, has burned up the transmission. And it's since started to burn up the transmission again. I think the truck itself has probably less than 10,000 miles on it. You know, I mean, 11,000, I think, is where it's at. So we did not go ahead, after we had approved the purchase of another transmission, we did not buy that transmission, though, because just there's something else. We're just going to continue to burn up <coughs> transmissions. So it, it's just very underpowered. What we found was that after they ran it on um, whatever their diagnostic tools were, uh, the engine without water on that truck, just flatbed with the equipment on there, no water, that engine capacity is 100% already. And you add water and it was over 120% of engine's capacity with water on it. So it's going to continue to burn up transmission. So I got to thinking, what's the easiest, simplest way to increase horsepower? Well, it's got 354 gears in it which is a highway gear, you're going to be running 90 mile an hour down the highway in a rush truck, which is not needed. So we looked at, I'm, I'm currently trying to find pricing on changing like a 410 gear. <coughs> it's taking forever to get to place prices back. Um, the basis of the truck is a very stout truck, Dana 80 rear end, Dana 60 front end. It's a very stout truck, it just has, what we found out is that 50 of them were special ordered through Dodge with 318s, because they never even made that truck with 318. They special ordered it for utility company. Utility company took possession of 10 and never took the other 40 because they were junk. And so what they did with the other 40 was they started selling them dirt cheap to anybody building anything. And that's how we ended up with one. So we're not sure what to do with this truck. It's just, it's I think until we, we were going to repurpose it without water. Uh, the Hudson area has a truck, but that's what it is. It doesn't carry water. Um, but it carries the rescue tools and some support equipment. So that's what we were looking at doing with it. Um, we still are, but the other chief's meeting the other night, every, every chief is theory of getting it at their station, but they're going to have another truck because the transmission works up. How many of those do you have? They're just sold on. The other, the other Dodges we have are manuals and 360s. You know, Five-speed transmissions and 360s. Other than some individuals have difficulty driving a manual transmission in full drive or in a deep field we've replaced a couple of clutches with a substantially heavier clutch um, and solve those problems they don't have the issue of being underpowered and it's a combination of the 360 and the speed. Um, so we're looking at what we can do with this thing but after after yesterday's fire there was a little bit of oil underneath the transmission Great. This is another. Yesterday was a bad day for equipment, but I don't want to get into everything else. But just want to let you know, I don't know what to do with this truck. I'm trying to find first, I'm trying to find out how much it's going to cost to put gears in. So I don't know. I need to put a bigger engine in. So. Well, and that's what I talked to the chiefs about, and, and I said, I, you know, I found, <coughs> I found a used one with like sixty thousand miles for eight hundred bucks. It's a ninety-eight three sixty. That's easy enough. Well, Marshall says the the um, a lot of the electrical wiring harness and stuff is all different between the 318 and the 360. So I don't know. I don't know that personally. I don't know. I really have no idea about Dodge in general. So just to let you know, it is a problem truck, and I don't know what to do about it. If you guys have ideas that I'm very willing to hear, I've got Jerry Sanders, uh, one of our fire chiefs, from the former staff, and he's thinking about it. I've asked Lawrence Gillespie. The one thing that everybody keeps saying is change the gears. They're, they're certain that that will be, because it is kind of like a horsepower adder, basically, to change gears. I don't know that that's the, the master solution. We may change gears and still burn the transmission up. So do you even waste the money on that? already at 100%, I don't think it's going to help you that. I know. I, I don't know what to do with this truck. So if you guys have ideas, please let me know. You know, if you talk to somebody and they had an issue with Dodge before the same. But I just want to let you guys know it is an issue. This, do you want an executive session to discuss this? Is that, is it? 
I'm going to have to wait. Okay. Right, well, we've already talked about this. Yeah, great. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to hold the wait for until we get done with our schedule. Coach, you want to do either? Um, let Is Jim, Jim come in yeah. first. Yeah. I'm sure he's out yeah. there. Yeah. And then you can. Jim, come here, please. Sorry. I'm not in a hurry. I can wait with you. <laughs> no, uh, sometimes I get a little lengthy when I'm talking. Oh. <laughs> so do I. You may have a trouble then. <laughs> First of all, good morning, and uh, I know you're probably getting close to the end of your budget process, so I appreciate you allowing me to come in at this later date, and my wife appreciates it too, because it allowed us to take a two-week vacation, and we haven't done it in a very long time, so, so I'm in good standing at home in the process too. So, Just a little bit of background on our organization, Sunflower Diversified Services provides uh, various services and supports to children and adults from birth up through and including retirement age. And we are the only organization in this part of the state that provides that full range of services and one of only two or three in central and western Kansas that provide services to that range of, of ages. So um, we serve a five county area which includes Stafford, Barton, Pawnee, Rice, and Rush counties. And Stafford has been a part of this uh, cooperative, if you will, for the better part of 40 years. So um, I'm probably not giving you any information that you don't already have, but it's always kind of nice to just lay the groundwork anyway. This morning I'm visiting with you specifically about our early childhood program, infants and toddlers. Uh, services to children birth to age three and then certain supporting services to their families. Um, we are in our 47th year of providing those services. We started in the mid 60s, uh, expanded <coughs> to provide adult programs after that. But children's services is where we began. And it's because families wanted an alternative to institutional care, uh, wanted some type of community oriented program that would meet the needs of their children. So uh, there's a list of all of the services that we provide, but basically it is therapeutic services, um, educational, motor development, speech language, those kinds of things. We, uh, we concentrate primarily on those first couple of years because that's those first two to three years is when the bulk of the learning really takes place. That's when the development of the, of the brain really takes its greatest growth and has its greatest impact. So um, last year we served uh, a total of 238 children on the second page if you're wanting to follow that at all, um, that received one or more of the services that we have. That could be anything from the screenings, community screenings that we offer in the five counties up to and including a full range of, of services, therapeutic services and such. 25 of those children were Stafford County residents. We had 151 referrals last year coming from doctors, health departments, and an increasing number of referrals that are just directly from families. I really believe that with all of the emphasis that's taking place right now on autism, the uh, advertisements, the educational process there, that parents are much more aware and maybe much more concerned and so when they see things that just don't look like it's quite the way it should be, they're taking advantage of those early detection processes, which is a good thing. We also provide uh, play groups in all of the five county areas. Last year we did uh, 44 different play groups and I don't have a breakdown of that for county, but basically that gives an opportunity for children with uh, developmental issues to be able to, to be with and to, and to learn from and maybe help learn children that are developing at a normal pace. It also gives families an opportunity to, to visit with other families who may be experiencing the same concerns or families whose child is developing at a, at a normal pace and, and just get a little bit of support in that way. Uh, another service that is now a big part of what we do, which doesn't really sound like it belongs in early childhood services, is infant mental health services. 
and <clears throat> it is more probably again related to the increasing understanding and knowledge of the autism spectrum, but developmental kinds of issues that relate to social, emotional, and some of the things that are also related to, um, unfortunately, maybe uh, a mother that is, is drugs or some of the environmental issues that are plaguing more and more of our kids regardless of the age. And so this gives us an opportunity again to work with the family to help them to understand some of the things that maybe are areas of concern. It's, it's not unusual probably for uh, a mom or dad to say, well, my, you can tell if the child is not walking at the right age or if they're not speaking or some of those things. But a lot of times a child that uh, is very quiet that uh, doesn't respond to smiles, doesn't cry a lot, but families tend to say, well, it's such a good baby. And sometimes that's not necessarily exactly what you're looking at. Sometimes that's a child that's not developing emotionally at the right pace. So, uh, so that has become a much greater priority for us. And four to five, about five of our staff are certified now in that area. The, the next area just talks basically about our incredible years of preschool. County funds are not used for that, but I include it because it, it's an extension of, of a service that we provide that uh, maybe a few years ago we weren't sure that we really needed to do because the schools are supposed to provide services for, for kids that have some kind of developmental delay when they reach the age of three. What we were finding was that a lot of kids were falling through the cracks that they didn't qualify for the school program, but they certainly had some delays, and to wait two or three years before they got into school was going to just uh, compound those delays and those issues. So we began this program last year. We had 66 children that participated in that program, and of that, 49 of them fell into one or more of those at-risk categories. And again, it's uh, a child of a, of a teen mom, um, a child who, out of, out of home placements, substance abuse issues associated with the family, just those things that unfortunately is a part of the what, society. What money is funded this program? Uh, tuition fees uh, and then um, grants and scholarships. Um, getting into the heart of it is our financial request. Stafford County has funded us at 32684 for a good number of years. And I will tell you that in proportion to what some of the other counties are doing, that's a very high amount. Um, and that, to me, says, uh, quite honestly, you guys are, are supporting us where we need to be. The other counties are need to pick up the, the pace a bit. And we have requested increases from uh, Barton, Pawnee, and Rice County this year to try to start getting them to where they need to be. The, those funds are combined. If uh, you know, if you, if you look at the overall budget, they're combined with state aid, uh, with federal dollars from um, um, that, are, that are passed through from the Department of Health and Environment. We get Medicaid dollars for children who qualify, and uh, and then some of the money that, that is raised through our local efforts with our Invest in Kids scholarship programs. Most of that money goes for the, uh, the Incredible Years Preschool, but some of it goes to offset uh, cuts in funding for this program. We've seen pretty significant cuts in the last few years. And with the state's budget the way it is, we don't anticipate that that's going to get any better anytime soon. They, uh, they consistently say that services for kids and early education is very, very important, but they never fund it. Not too, not too surprisingly, they expect uh, the local governments to do that. So we have been lucky enough to be able to access state uh, categorical aid funds. But again, those dollars with the per pupil counts this year, those were frozen by the legislature too. So we're hoping that it will remain the same as it is this year, but we don't expect to see uh, any real increase unless we see a significant increase in the number of children. That probably typically hasn't happened. Here, here. So, um, uh, overall, uh, that's our financial position. We uh, are more than happy if, if, you're, if you're interested to provide you with any uh, 
audit or additional financial information you might need to look at. The other thing that we don't have at this point is a representative from the staff of the county on our board. So uh, you don't, you're not, because we're not a, a contracting county entity per se, SDSI performs that function. So you're not, you're not required or expected to appoint someone to the board, but if you have a person that you can recommend to us that you think would be a, a good addition to this board of directors. We're, we're probably entering into a time now with, with uh, the way funding has gone and with the kind of that ongoing trend of wanting to cut government support and reduce government involvement that the board's function is going to become just that much more important. And so we would really like to have um, somebody from the, from the Stafford County area representing your interests and, and helping us to, to go in a direction we need to go. So, uh, again, if you've got suggestions or if you want to send people our way or whatever, uh, typically if you don't have to make that appointment, you probably don't choose to because finding volunteers is not that easy anymore. We realize that. But, uh, but certainly it would be beneficial to you and it would be very beneficial to us to have that additional representation. So just something to, to keep in mind. Um, other than that, I, I'm like you, I could go on the rest of the morning, <laughs> but I think you've probably got other business. So uh, any questions? So you, have? A, you have a limited number on the board? Um, our bylaws allow us to go up to, I think it's 15, 15. anywhere from 10 to 15. And we, we typically prefer to have a, a couple of representatives from each of the, at least two representatives from each county. Right now, we don't even have one from Stafford County. So, um, I'm going to have that happen. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think who, Randy, Randy Watson was the last board member. And he made a couple of suggestions when he left the board, but the people that he had suggested we contacted said they just didn't feel like they had time to devote to that. So, so is this once a month? Or uh, actually, we meet every other month now. We used to meet once a month, but now it's every two months. And uh, board meeting starts at 6.30 in the evening. Uh, depending on the length of the agenda, it's usually about two hours. And we try to keep it to that. Uh, the rest of the business typically can be handled. The, our executive committee, executive board, is allowed to, to make decisions in, in, in lieu of the full board decisions. But a lot of the things we do, do by email and by conference and all this stuff, too, if, if things come up in between. But uh, right now, every other month seems to be working for us. I don't know what else I can tell you other than answer questions. But like I said, this has been, a, from the very start, this has been a critical program that obviously families are taking advantage of when you look at the numbers. So any assistance you can continue to provide, we would. Do you see the number from Stafford County increasing on that? It stays pretty steady. steady. It has been higher than that, but for the most part, it's pretty steady. And then we serve on average about four to five adults from Stafford County as well. And that fluctuates a little bit too, but for the most part, those numbers stay pretty much the same. That's why uh, we've always been comfortable just keeping our financial requests the same as well. So are we higher than like Barton County? Yes, you are. Really. Yeah. And that's, I, I would like to be able to say that that's not the case. Barton County, um, Barton County just has not stepped up in recent years. They've cut their funding over the last four to five years uh, pretty significantly, saying that they, they just don't believe that that's a county function. And um, with, with, some, with something of a change in the commissioner makeup now, we're hoping that that'll start to reverse itself. But um, they, they have not, and they recognize, when I met with them a couple of weeks ago, they recognized that they're getting a very good deal. In fact, I think uh, Commissioner Gates made that very comment. And so my hope is that they'll start to, to revisit their budget and, and address it accordingly. And again, I, uh, you know, if we were doing this on the basis of percentages and stuff, then it would be very difficult for me to justify the kind of requests I'm making, honestly. 
uh, what I'm hoping is that uh, other the other counties will start to look at the level of funding that you guys are providing and recognize that as as the level that they need to be stepping up to. Because I know in some of these agencies, you know, they, they figure out population and the number of clients and so on mm -hmm. and so forth and then derive at 8%, 10%, uh -huh. right. you know, of three or four different counties. And, 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 and we used to do that uh, before SDSI came in as the, as the CDO. We used to do that as well with uh, serving children and adults. But it becomes more difficult, at least for me, it becomes a lot more difficult to do that when you're just talking about just talking about children because uh, um, they could just. Right. But yeah, you're right. If if we were trying to do it on any kind of a pro rata basis, that would make the most sense. And that's the way we used to do it too. When we were working with that entire population right. and making our budget request that way. Okay. Well, we'll see if we get maybe Shane might entertain that idea of going back and serving on the board. My <laughs> <laughs> plate's <is> pretty full. <laughs> Every other month. Two yeah, maybe hours. we can find we can probably find somebody. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the pressure's on. Yeah. It's either you or you find somebody. <laughs> yes. It could be. I'll find somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I appreciate your time very Thank much, you. and I know you'll do what you can do for us. So, Thank thanks a lot. Thank you, Jim. Thank, Thank you. you. I guess you're back on. Yep. Budget folders. Can we include that anyway? It's already in there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, fine. Because I had talked to him, and he told me it would be the same, so I'm going to plug that into the equation. Are you going to do executives? Yep, with FBI. How long swing? do you need? Couple minutes, really. Oh. Five minutes. Ten. Five. Yeah. Same ten. Ten. Is right. the hospital people out there? No. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you, Motion. We get on the executive session for ten minutes. Four. What do you call it? I don't know what you're doing. The discussion we're having before I arrive. It would be. Is it non elected personnel? Yeah. There you go. For non elected personnel. Non elected personnel. For how long? Ten minutes. Second. Then we would say we're going to 10 minute executive session for non elected personnel. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Uh, you're doing too much, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Balance sheet for April. Total current assets were about eight hundred and eight thousand nine hundred and ten. Net property plant equipment three hundred and fifty-eight thousand one hundred and fourteen. Units total assets one million four hundred sixty-seven thousand twenty-four. Total current liabilities was five hundred and seventy-eight thousand seven hundred and seventy-five. Total long-term liabilities was twenty-six thousand six hundred seventeen. Our total fund balance was five hundred and sixty one thousand six hundred and thirty three. So we were down a little bit from prior month, but still up from prior year end. Month. Year to date, there was a loss of 99 
Think was the cause of the trend this trend for April, just the bad month, or nobody is steadily.
up a lot. We had one bone density in May, seven MRIs in April, and four in May. April, we had total lab tests of 2,575, and in May, we had a total of 10,588. Yeah, healthcare, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I wish 8,500 was from the healthcare. And for 20 bucks, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that covered the cost of any profit. Um, ER was down in April with 50, but it was back up to 63 patients in May. Home health, we had 19 patients in April with 144 visits, which was up. And in May, we had 17 patients with 129 visits. Outpatient other was up to 277 in April and 248 in May. Clinic specialty was 16 in April and 28 in May.
the uh, to change the subject a little bit. <clears throat> the billing from the EMS to the EMS from the hospital for the time that you've, you've spent on that. Are you doing that on a monthly basis? We have not done that on a monthly basis. Uh, Julie has kept track of her time and I asked her for it this morning. Do you plan on doing that on a monthly basis? We'll do whatever is convenient for, I mean, whatever you guys want us to do. I don't think you want to manage to ask that. Do it quarterly and monthly? Yeah. I would rather see it monthly, I think, though. I mean, kind of, sure. I mean, at least know where we're at. Sure. I think her time is quite since she's been, has went down since they went through the first bundle. Okay. I was going to ask that last time I forgot. So. Yeah, we'll do it one thing. Can you remember that? Or like, yeah. <laughs> and your numbers on your balance sheet <coughs> from from your net your net numbers from month, current month to prior month don't carry over exact. <laughs> Why would that be? Specifically, line item 30. On the May sheet, you have a negative um, 99,420 on prior month, which should be April and your May is 91,184. The April financials we did, and these are the ones the board approved, and the auditors had us make two adjustments that were really prior year, they were 2012. We had to make an adjustment in 12 and then reverse it in January. So that is what okay. those two are. There was one there. That must be what happened up here on the, the <clears throat> asset side too. That because your, your prior month don't carry over on your total assets. Yeah. <clears throat> By 300000 Since the board had already approved the April months, we stuck with that in May. What kind of changes would they be making? Do you remember? I remember making the entry. I don't know exactly what it was. Interesting 
entries on here. Does anybody know what 101 North Park Avenue in Stafford is? It's $25,000 worth of back taxes. Okay. Let me see. This one here, 101, it's third from the bottom. Say that's a lot of specials. Oh, that's the old high school. Ah. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Mr. Kim bought that. And uh, he bought it. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. <laughs> I wonder if it's going to be a classic. White elephant, does it have uh, asbestos insulation? Mm -hmm. Probably. It was built in the 20s. So the old Ellsworth Hospital is like that. It sits there and it's you know, basically a liability because every year the cost of removing the asbestos goes up. In fact, I came across something courtesy of my insurance agent. I switched to insurance carriers so I could finally actually talk to somebody. Uh, and he came over to look at you know what they were insuring, and he goes, good, 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 good. And he says, can I break off a little piece of the shingle? Asbestos. That's on one of my little houses. Apparently, they used asbestos for everything back in the days. I said, well, are you still going to insure me? He says, yeah, but you know, put on your list of things to do in the next five years, reside house, because sooner or later, insurance carriers are going to be redlining those. As if somebody's going to come up and start eating expensive <laughs> shingles off my little house. But uh, that's just you know, amazing because you know, I, I was intrigued at the idea, well, what if I got ambitious and took them off now? Well, first of all, there's one place in Kansas you can dump this stuff down in Harper County. You're right, there's a lot of houses around that has asbestos shingles on them. What sort of resolution number? 12. R12. Um, now, there's a couple ways we can go in terms of abstracting, because I think we have two offices town that do it? You got Amy and does, does the bank the still bank? still running the old place? I don't know if they are. I don't know. Well, just for the sake of argument, assuming we have two abstractors in town, do you want me to kind of put this out for bids or do you want me just to take half to each office, assuming we have two? If we have two, I'd split it. Okay. It, it, it's just, you know, it, it, it's, it's more public relations than anything else. Um, I will uh, kind of split it up and, and see what we got. And uh, who does that for the I don't know. Because this is Amy McVeigh's old office. Yeah. She was an right. employee of the bank, then right. she went out on her own. Right. And she's in her uh, old office, office across the street. First Title, American title, or something. So I don't know. I didn't think else. I don't know. I make the motion we adopt resolution 2013 R12. Second. Okay, we move and second. We adopt resolution 2013 R12. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed same sign. Motion carried. And you'll get a kick out of this because he already is, you know, doesn't like me. I thought I'd put George Crank in her name first. <laughs> <laughs> like well, yeah, here, 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 here's something that always drives people nuts is, is when you list their name first. Because every time it's, it's a case is referred to, it's, you know, versus George Crankenberg at all, you know, list all the other names. So you're, you're ideally you put like a corporation first or you know, something where you're not going to have this person really pissed off and stalking people. But I'll use George as, you know, 
I'll die before he gets out of prison. <laughs> Somebody's some of these people were playing the bankruptcy game, but most of them, I think all of them are like wires over there are out of bank. They got booted out of bankruptcy. Yeah, yeah. they got one, two, three, four, five, six tracks over there at Stafford. He's the guy whose house burned down. Mm -hmm. It's all the city's fault. Yes. Yeah, the six who paid, sure. Uh, Michael Gantz paid, William and Genevieve Hull paid, uh, Barbara Foos, F O O S, paid, Greg and Elizabeth Otto paid, um, Lisa Wallander paid, and Reyes, Mr. Reyes, and I guess his, maybe his sister or maybe his wife who uses her own name, Miss Ortiz paid for something over in uh, Maxville. So, what could be sent out? You know, what? Basically, 50 letters. And yeah. It's not an overwhelming response. So, leave anything else? How soon is that? I mean, what's your time frame? Well, I'll. Start with the abstractors, and then maybe today I'll walk over and knock on the doors. Um, and uh, then I pretty much am constrained to wait for them. And uh, we'll uh, and hopefully we get her get her on file. You know, well, yeah, we're going to incur two significant newspaper publication costs, I'm sure, because a couple letters came back to me were it's not a good address. So, and again, most of these are city properties. Uh, fairly well, you know, among, you know, two properties in sewer, and the rest were pretty much split amongst the three larger towns. What's fascinating about some of these pieces of land over in Maxville is, is farmers buy them and plow them up. Apparently, these are like lots on the outskirts of town. Anything? Nope. Sure. Nope. We're adjourned.